We've been so lucky to have Austin with us for the past um, few weeks to give us a series of weekly workshops on health and wellness targeted towards musicians. Um, so Austin is a doctoral trombone student here at Jacobs. And one of his passions is nutrition, health and wellness for musicians. And he'll tell you a bit more about his story and how he came to this path. But um, he has a lot of really great content on his Facebook and on his Instagram for free. So please do follow him. Go look him up on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and then you can see his uh, really nice stretching and workout routines that he posts there. And it's just something that's good to do for yourself while we're stuck at home. I know I've been sitting in a chair way too often these days. So it's been really good for me to just have some stretches to do regularly and try to get those muscles loosened up. Um, so Austin, you wanna take it away? Yeah, thanks for that wonderful introduction, Elizabeth. Uh, welcome everybody. This is the fourth week out of the six weeks to adapt, change and grow. And today we're gonna to be talking about developing your own productivity block. And this is really great. Um, in the sense that you can allocate your time towards certain activities. Um, you can, using these goal-oriented methods, you can really sit down and focus and increase your productivity. And that actually helps you get more time and feel a little bit more accomplished in the day. But before we get into that, um, we're just going to go into a little bit about myself really quick. Um, I got into health and wellness about three years ago uh, after, after accumulating three different injuries in the course of a year. So... It took me a while to get over, but on that second or third injury, I said enough was enough, and I decided to kind of do something about it. So I started pursuing these different certifications and applying concepts to myself, and I was able to overcome my injury eventually, and now I've been pain-free for about a year and a half. So it's been an exciting journey, and I'm happy to share um, some of the stuff I picked up along the way. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I do run an online health and wellness brand dedicated to musicians, the functional musician, and it's dedicated to helping you integrate sustainable health and wellness habits in your life, particularly um, mobility, strength training, and nutrition. Due to this whole COVID-19 situation, I've had to really sit down and think about where my business is heading next. And in a couple of weeks, I'm actually going to be launching the first workout program that is designed for musicians to prevent injury, build a functional posture, and most importantly, you don't need any equipment. This can all can be done in the convenience of your home. So that's pretty exciting. And for those of you that want a sneak peek, go over to my Instagram page where I do post workouts, mobility, and nutrition tips um, and upload that pretty regularly. So that's some free content for you all over there. So what is a productivity block? Basically, a productivity block is... Um, is a block of time that you allocate to certain activities, tasks, or responsibilities uh, with the idea of focusing and being as productive as you can. Um, some other things associated with it, you can have multiple productivity blocks throughout the day, and these are really great for planning out your moments in your day in advance. And by planning these out in advance, you're going to um, be more focused, it's going to keep you accountable, and most importantly, it's going to help you be productive. Um, something that I've been kind of um, juggling with is dealing with, or just like getting the idea of Parkinson's law. And that's basically work expands so as to fill the time available for its competition. So essentially, if you give yourself two hours to do a task, no matter how long the task is, you are going to take two hours to do that task. If you, uh, for construction, oh, this construction will be done in two years. Well, that's what would happen. If it only takes a month of construction, but you allocate it two years of time, that work is going to expand the fill of the time. So I like to, I like to do the what, why, and the how. And right now, um, I wanna address why do productivity blocks help? Well, it's really, really simple. They all help, they help us establish a flow through goal setting by allowing us to single task and focus on one goal or one task, one activity, we're gonna minimize distraction by allocating your time and going towards this goal, you're gonna create a sense of control. And the beauty, beautiful thing about this is that um, it helps you preserve your willpower. And after you're done being productive, you can feel accomplished and your downtime is going to feel a lot more productive and it's going to feel a lot more, um, a lot more earned or deserved. And you're gonna feel very, very empowered. So there's several different techniques that we're going to talk about today before we get into some workshop type activities. But 
the first activity I want everybody to be aware of, it's called the Pomodoro technique. And basically the whole entire goal is to work in short, productive and focused bursts. So it's really simple. You just choose a task, you set the time for 25 minutes, although there are several new studies that suggest the brain can only focus for 24 minutes, but one minute, who am I to, to argue that? Uh, you're gonna then work on the task until the timer ends. Now it's very important that when you're working on a task, if it's a, we're gonna talk about this later, but if it's deep work or it's something that requires a lot of focus, concentration and critical thinking, that we have some goals to kind of help us allocate our 25 minutes. So after this 25 minutes, you take a short five minute break away from your activity. And this is a mental break. And I wanna encourage everybody to um, think it's a mental break for not only your mind, but also your body. So avoid going on that phone, go outside, go walk around, meditate, stretch, do whatever your body is telling you that it needs and do whatever you can to kind of refresh that mind. So anyway, so basically every four sections sessions, you want to take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. That's a lot of focus. Really, that's that's 100 minutes of focus in the span of um, two hours. So you're really only breaking for 20 minutes. But by splitting up that 20 minutes into five minute segments, you can focus for longer periods of time. So the next technique is called a 90 minute focus section section session and the whole entire goal is to work with your body's natural energy flow so throughout the day we call some, we have something called ultra dean rhythms and that's basically a recurrent period or cycle of your body's natural energy ebb and flow that is repeated throughout a 24-hour day if you look at the graph to the left you'll see that the 90 minutes not all of that um, has a high peak you have you have a peak of high energy and then it's going to naturally come down so by kind of working with our body's natural energy, we can kind of um, strategically position ourselves to be more productive than we normally would if we were at our low energy. And this is why people say, oh, you shouldn't have coffee right when you wake up because it messes with your ultra DN rhythm. It will instantly get you up to that 90 right away. However, that crash is going to be longer. That crash is going to be more significant. And it's, kind of, it's going to just going to throw off your natural body of, or your natural energy flow. So that's why they recommend drinking your coffee one to two hours after you wake up to kind of go with the natural flow of your body. So after that work of 90 minutes, we want to rest for 20 to 30 minutes. Now, um, I mentioned rest in the other technique as well. And this is the most important part because we cannot focus for very long. We need to take care of our minds. We need to take care of our willpower. And the more you start to deplete your body's willpower, um, the less you're going to have at the end of the day. And the willpower will recover a little bit, but if it goes down to a certain, certain point, that's when your mind starts to feel burnt out. That's when you hit mental walls. And that's where you're like, you know what? I will watch season two of Ozark today kind of thing. So just be wary of that and keep that in mind as we continue. So um, we learned about two different techniques. Now we're gonna look at the types of work, okay? So we have deep work, shallow work, and reactive tasks or reactive work. The deep work is what we want to promote. This is, these are the whole point of these sessions. With the deep work, we're going to promote uh, deep focus. It's we're going to require deep thinking. And a lot of time, you're going to be pushing your cognitive ability to its limit. So some examples, you could be practicing, learning a new skill, or doing some kind of research. The shallow work are tasks that don't take up a lot of attention and energy and are often performed um, in a multitasking, distracted environment. And this can involve making your bed, doing laundry, um, phone calls, compiling music, um, maybe a very simple worksheet that you have to fill out, um, doing the dishes, et cetera. And then the reactive tasks are all tasks that are um, out of your control. So if someone emails you for a suggestion, that's um, a reactive task. If, someone, if your mom's calling you out of nowhere, that's a reactive task. Um, kind of those things that you have to accommodate in your daily life, but things that necessarily aren't pri that you shouldn't prioritize um, this kind of work to. So if we go back and we look at this 90 minute focus session, you'll notice that we have this natural ebb and flow of energy, right? We have this giant peak, it goes up the peak and then it comes down. Well, um, during these sessions, we wanna strategically um, interplay shallow work, 
deep work and reactive tasks. With deep work being at the peak of our energy, that way we can get them done the quickest and be our most productive self. So with that balance, I'm gonna keep coming back to that, but keep that in mind as we go along as well. So um, what do we do during our rest periods? The rest periods I've already said are the most important thing when we're trying to balance uh, our high level of focus with relaxation and recovery. And I just jotted down some things um, that you could do. This is not an all-inclusive list. This is just to give you some ideas. But for me, I've been I've been um, working or uh, doing Pomodoro technique for um, a couple years now. And the thing that really helps me with these five minutes is meditation or stretching or just taking a light walk um, outside. And something that can really, really help too is while you're taking a walk is listening to some inspiring music. But basically you wanna get away from your work. You wanna get away from that deep focus and get your mind to feel um, really, really relaxed. So using the chat feature, um, let's um, expand on this list. If you can think of anything else that um, you like to do after you do something of high focus um, or productive, uh, feel free to write it in a chat so we can add to this list. Ah, stretch out and rest my eyes. Resting your eyes is super, super important, especially if your productivity or your um, the techniques that you're using is all on a screen. Watch inspiring piano videos. I love that. I watch inspiring trombone videos all the time too. Stare out the window. That's fantastic too. I love it. It helps relax the mind. And I think I saw a study one time that said, um, the more you daydream, the more creative you are. Play with my cat. I'm a cat person too. And I wish I had a cat. I would be playing with my cat 24 seven. Watch the bird feeder. Oh, that's beautiful. Birds are beautiful creatures. My favorite bird is the cardinal. Crimson red. Gotta love it. All right, this is a great list. Thank you guys for interacting with me. Um, those are all fantastic things. The important thing to remember is that, you know, we're all different. We're all human and we all experience things differently. So finding what works for you um, is only going to help you in the long run. Okay, so now we're going to get into a little, um, a little workshop type thing. So, um, I want everybody to kind of make up a mock to-do list of up to 10 items that describe your typical one day, your typical day. Um, I put my example on the bottom and for you guys, I really want you to kind of put things that you um, have to do every day, things that you want to do every day and things that you um, want, uh, things that you have to do every day, but don't have to do every day. That didn't make sense. Like um, exercise, practicing are things you have to do every day, but maybe homework and cleaning a room are things um, you want to do. So let's just take about 60, 30, 60 seconds to write that all down. Great, give me a little thumbs up on, on the icon when, um, when I know you're ready to go. All right, fantastic. All right, so next thing we wanna do is we want to organize this list of 10-ish items into different sections, that being shallow, deep, and reactive tasks. And as an example, I'm doing the same thing, but it's just fleshed out on the screen for everybody. Um, if you ever have any questions, by the way, like how to distinguish between two, maybe some things are really, really tricky for you, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and I'll do my best to um, address those as they come up. 
Um, just some little explanation about why I organized this in a different way to kind of help you. Um, shallow tasks, I put exercise and workouts into shallow tasks. Um, just because for me, it's, um, it doesn't require uh, so much focus as it, as it is a relaxation technique for my mind and my body. So that kind of um, helps me uh, be produ uh, helps m me increase my energy and be productive after that. So it is kind of it serves as a balance to my other deep tasks. Can you define reactive tasks again? Of course. So reactive tasks are um, everything that has to do with um, something where you react to. You react to an email. Uh, you react to a phone call. Um, maybe you need to um, send a picture to someone. That's a reactive task. Anything someone asks you for something is a reactive task. And um, just to, since we're on that topic, um, Deep tasks require um, really intense focus and shallow tasks are tasks you can kind of do very, very quickly or tasks that you can multitask with. Another way to think about it is reactive tasks also bring very little long-term benefit. Okay. So um, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna group these different activities into categories that make sense to you. Okay, so the we want to try to achieve a balance between deep work, shallow work, um, and reactive tasks. So uh, some ideas is that if you have a lot of computer tasks that are in different sections, you can group that into um, one section. Okay, or if you have a lot of tasks that are similar in, in nature, you can group those into one session. The whole idea is that you don't want to be going from one place to another, one place to another, one place to another. Um, when doing these activities, you kind of want your environment to stay uh, very, very similar so you can be more productive, you can stay focused, and you can still continue to be in the zone. Cool, and, and then, then again, give me a good little thumbs up whenever you are ready to move on. Okay, we'll take 10 more seconds. All right. So here's what I did, just as an example. Um, I grouped warm up fundamentals, cleaning my room, and listening to one hour of marketing strategies while I take notes on those marketing strategies as I see fit. So um, I chose warm up and fundamentals and cleaning my room to put them together in the same thing because I warm up in my bedroom now. Um, I decided that I don't hate cleaning my room. So instead of listening to an inspirational music, I'm going to multitask that with listening to inspirational marketing strategies, hopefully crossing my fingers. The next thing I did was uh, I put all of my um, paper related items or computer related items into one kind of block. So read chapter for E635, which will take me probably half an hour. Um, paying bills is a reactive or shallow task. And then I combat that with some more deep work with completing a workout for musicians. Um, and I won't go down the list, but that kind of gives you an idea. I'm trying to achieve balance and kind of go with this natural ebb and flow of the energy. Um, and I'm hoping you guys can find a way to do that for you too. Does anybody want to share maybe just a little bit um, in the chat of a group that they, uh, that they compiled?
Okay, well, I think it'd be a great time to move on then. So using the previous methods, we wanna fit these into appropriate time blocks, okay? So looking at the tasks, um, what technique fits it the best? Um, would it fit, would, some things are gonna work better than others, but for me, the Pomodoro technique um, pretty much fits into almost all of those. And we do want to group things in a way to include deep, shallow, and reactive work to kind of help us achieve the balance. Uh, maybe you don't need, um, maybe you only have one or two reactive tasks that take you five minutes. That's fantastic. Then um, that's going to be something you can quickly check off your list. Uh, so I would also put some shallow work to um, pair with the reactive work to help you recover from that deep work that you experienced earlier. And we do have an example from Mirier. We have cooking and watching French videos. I put them together so I can multitask. And those are two tasks that would go great um, multitasking together. Unless you're trying to like actively learn the French that's being communicated, but that's, all, that's a different subject for um, something else. Because you basically you'd be cooking, but you'd be trying to deep focus, and that would actually prevent you from being able to achieve that deep focus, if that makes sense. Okay, so the Pomodoro technique in a 90-minute focus session. I put these, I grouped mine into here to kind of give you a sense of um, an idea of the different blocks that I created using my routine, okay? And you can see that the Pomodoro routine um, trumps is pretty common. I do three of those. I have a 90-minute focus session, and I have an other. I put it as other because this is kind of, these are like tasks that um, uh, the workouts always a set designated amount of time and uploading that workout to Instagram is a set designated amount of time, but um, I don't really need a focus session to complete those. Those are just um, tasks that I can do on my own accord and um, calling my mom. I mean, I love my mom, so it's nice to actually like focus and talk to her. I don't need to plan it as a, as a session, but a big one for me, um, if you notice, I'm trying to have this ebb and flow, especially during the 90 minute um, focus session. And that might actually be a little bit of a danger because paying bills can sometimes be stressful for people. So um, that may serve as a recovery period, as a reactive task, or it may um, kind of take out a little bit more willpower than I want to. And if that was the case, I would move complete workout for musicians um, down to the Pomodoro technique where I have an extra 25 minutes and I'd say finish anything that didn't get done that day. So um, allowing yourself that flexibility um, in human nature um, is, is a great, is a great, great thing. So uh, we did kind of go pretty quickly. These sessions are only 30 minutes long. We have six minutes left. So does anybody want to share um, one of their examples? So what I'd want you to do is I want you to say the technique you're using and then I'd want you to list the tasks after that. Elizabeth has been trying something similar to Pomodoro for studying. That's fantastic. Has it been working working for you? But I think I have trouble recovering during the breaks. Have you um have you been have you been having trouble mentally recovering or um, physically recovering in the sense that you've been sitting down for a long period of time and have um, tension in your body. Mirie said um, 90 minute challenge or 90 minute session and she works on her homework and the computer and replies to email, that's fantastic. And um, I would challenge you to break down work on my homework just a little bit further and maybe be a little bit more specific. That way you can have um, attainable goals in your homework. For example, I'm going to write two paragraphs for this essay and I'm going to fill out this worksheet and I'm going to read this chapter. That kind of gives you a mental note of what to work on rather than living on the fly in that moment. Uh, Pomodoro for dividing up practice tasks, scales, chords, etudes, and rep. 
I absolutely love that. I also do that. Um, Elizabeth, uh, with the mental recovery thing, the great thing about all these techniques is that we can experiment to find a way that works for us. So if you're having trouble mentally recovering because you've been focusing for so long, perhaps that would be a good time to extend your break time from five to 10 minutes and also try some mental recovery, um, including going for a walk or meditation or um, uh, as someone said before, kind of resting your eyes because you're staring and um, really trying to internalize that information. I hope that helps. That's just a thought, food for thought. Okay, so um, we wanna add these blocks to our schedule. Okay, so for example, I like to do it the night before. We talked about last week how I make my to-do list and I kind of plan out my day the night before. If you have these blocks of time, it's really easy to add it to your schedule um, if you have a lot of free time, okay? So by scheduling these blocks, it's not only gonna hold you accountable, but it's going to um, kind of motivate you to get it done. It's gonna motivate you to show up, even if you um, aren't kind of feeling it that day. So just a couple more things. We always wanna plan for rest and recovery time, um, but also, um, Elizabeth, we wanna allow ourselves flexibility with our rest and recovery time. If you find that five minutes isn't enough, you know yourself better than anyone else. Um, feel free to be productive and actively recover during your recovery time. It's not, um, someone asked me yesterday, it was like, isn't recovery time just slacking off? Like, shouldn't I be productive all the time? Well, we have limited resources and time is actually our most valuable resource. But if we don't have the willpower to allocate our time and be productive, then I would argue that um, recovery time is just, is a very important, important thing we want to prioritize. And last but not least, um, we wanna be realistic and flexible. We're all human, we're all different. We need to experiment on what works for us and find the times of the day where your peak, uh, your energy is at its natural peak. And with that 90 minute focus session, if you found your, if you know where your energy is consistently um, highest at the day, for example, at three o'clock, use that to your, to your advantage and do those things, um, do those hard, um, tasks, a deep focus task during that time. And you're going to find that you're going to be more productive. You're going to have more focus and you're going to feel like you got a lot done in a short amount of time. Okay. There is a question. I like the idea of a 24, 25 minute focus and a five minute break. Do you ever, ever have trouble re-engaging after the break? Is this a five, is the five minutes an interruption? This is a great question. And this is something that actually I've been asking myself a lot lately. Um, I noticed yesterday when I was doing this, that um, I was just kind of getting into the swing of things around the 15 to 20 to 25 minute um, period. And I wanted to keep going. Um, I did. However, I forced myself to take um, these five minute breaks. Um, and I found that the more breaks I took, um, the easier it was for me to come back and focus. But I always came back with the goal. We always wanna set our intent when we're coming back from these um, rest periods. For example, even just telling yourself, okay, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna be productive, I'm going to, do, I'm going to finish this presentation, I, and um, I'm going to do this to the best of my ability, um, mentally sets you up to go towards those um, mental goals. And that seems like a little silly, but um, by setting your intention, um, <laughs> it's gonna sound really weird, but setting your intention, you're externalizing it. And um, if you externalize something, you're more likely to um, achieve whatever you trying, are trying to achieve. And if you are having trouble also re-engage, if I'm having trouble re-engaging, um, centering yourself, doing like a two to three minute meditation to catch your breath and just remind yourself where you are can reap huge benefits because when our mind isn't coming back after a break, it's usually because um, a lot of thoughts are going on in our brain and we can't um, get rid of those thoughts. So by ex or getting rid of all of our thoughts in our brain and clearing our head, we're able to um, refocus. However, sorry, I keep going on, but this is kind of a skill. The first time you do this, you may have trouble doing this, but just like with anything, the more you practice it, the more you're going to get better. And what I found um, with the Pomodoro technique, if I force myself to take those five minute breaks, actual mental breaks away from the phone, away from computers, and just let my mind kind of decompress, 
you have energy, you have so much more energy at the end of the day to um, do different types of work that maybe you wouldn't if you were just kind of power through those sessions. Um, and last thing to think about, sorry, it's so much, um, but um, maybe if you're getting to the point where 20 to 25 minutes, you're really just really into the focus, maybe that would be a good time to kind of experiment with switching to a 90 minute focus session and see how long you can ride that rave, wave of productivity. Maybe you're naturally fighting um, your body's energy and you're starting to peak. And by taking that break, you're kind of ruining or you're kind of not riding that energy peak. So it's really about kind of what you're, what you're feeling in that moment and what your um, body's energy is doing. I hope that made sense. I know that was a lot. So um, thank you for bearing with me there. Um, so uh, that was a lot of information in 30, mi in 30 minutes. Um, next week, we're going to talk about burnout, the what, why, and how we can prevent it. For me as a doctoral student, like kind of ending his, his studies, I've been in school for about, um, I think this is my 13th year. So I've experienced burnout um, more than I'd like to um, admit. Um, I'm not an expert, but I do have some things to share. So feel free to join me next week. We would love to see you there. Thank you everybody for coming out um, and being so interactive. This was really fun. I hope you took something out of this. And um, I hope to see you next week. Everybody have a fantastic week. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, Austin Pansner, on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, everybody.